Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne. I'm the Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator, and with me today is County Board Chairman and co-host of this program, Bill Gehring. And we welcome our guest this month, Dean Ray Hernandez, who has been the Dean now of UW-Sheboygan, I think, for the last three years. Uh, today we're going to discuss some of the real exciting projects and initiatives and activities out here at UW-Sheboygan. Many of you may not be aware that the UW-Sheboygan campus is actually owned by the county and operated by the state. It's a rather unique and it's been a very successful partnership. So why don't we get into it. Dean, could you please start by sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and your roles and responsibilities as Dean here? Certainly, Adam. And um, hello to you. Hello, Chairman. Um, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's always a pleasure for me to talk about UW-Sheboygan, as you mentioned, there's lots of exciting things going on out here, and, and you know, I just love to see the, the kind of excitement and uh, rewards that, that I see happening on a daily basis here with our students. Um, I uh, was born and raised in Texas, and uh, came, actually was in Wisconsin in the late 80s. I attended graduate school at UW-Milwaukee, so I did have a taste of Wisconsin formerly and uh, spent about three years in Milwaukee so I, I was a little bit prepared for <laughs> the change in climate. Um, I met my wife there in, in UW Milwaukee and uh, absconded with her back to Texas where she, she and I worked for, for 20 years and uh, always looking for an opportunity to get back to the, to the area. My wife for her, this, is, this was homecoming you know three years ago and so when this position opened up and I had been uh, working my way from the, up from the faculty ranks into administrative posts uh, in uh, higher education. And then I was at a point in my career where I was ready to make a move into a campus executive officer position. And so when this uh, opening came about, you know, we were very excited about applying. And then when we visited Sheboygan and Sheboygan County, uh, we're just impressed uh, so much by the what a thriving community it is, the, the kinds of uh, refurbishment that's happening uh, in the downtown area along the lakefront, on the riverfront, and all of that. All of those are positive signs. And so it seemed like a, like a good place to, to live. And of course, that, that's been borne out since moving here about three years ago. So when folks hear Dean, the title Dean, give them a sense of what that means. What are some of your roles and responsibilities here? <clears throat> Really, the dean in, on this particular, in this particular institution functions more like a president of a small private college. Uh, we, you know, in, in larger institutions, a dean is responsible for a, for a certain division and over certain departments and mostly deals with internal kinds of administrative uh, functions and reports to a vice president, provost, or president, or something like that. In this position, the dean, the title dean, is not really appropriate in my, in my estimation because it really functions more like a college president. And I just mentioned my role is as much internal, external as it is internal. I'm, I'm responsible for being out in the community, uh, fundraising, friend raising, being involved in uh, uh, organizations, uh, creating awareness for the campus, you know, developing constituencies promoting the campus to the community at large and, and that sort of thing very much like a like a college president would do hmm. and so this particular position has the function of the of the administrative and academic leadership of the campus as well as the external relations that that goes along with uh, with the presidency of a college now earlier i mentioned the uh, partnership between the county and the state and we we have quite a history here could you touch on that a little bit well, this, these partnerships uh, have evolved over time, but initially got started in the early 1900s uh, when the, the, the president of the UW system, uh, President Van Heys, uh, coined the phrase the Wisconsin idea, which uh, literally meant that the boundaries of the university would be the boundaries of the state and higher education would be made available to every home around the state and so that meant that centers needed to be created at various locations in the state where uh, local residents could access uh, 
the university education. And so it started out as, a, as an extension of the UW and Madison, later becoming the center system. Uh, but in order for that to, to work, to operationalize the idea, the UW system entered into partnerships with local units of government saying, you know, if you will provide facilities, we will provide the programming and instruction for the local citizens. So as, as early as 1905, this idea was, was working and, and Sheboygan got into the act very early. And so by, by the 1930s, uh, there was a UW extension uh, operating in Sheboygan out of the old Central High School. And then I believe around 1962, the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors uh, uh, established the current location and broke ground uh, on the main building in 1962. And so it's, it's been a long-standing tradition in this community and, and a way of the UW system making higher education accessible at the local level and, and the county playing a significant role by providing the facilities and operation to in order to do that. So it's unique, but it's, it's been working quite well. Yeah, it's been working very well. In addition to that partnership, there's been a lot of interest and activity among students in participating here, and you were just showing us prior to starting the mm -hmm. uh, enrollment increases. What's happened to enrollment here since you became dean three years ago? Well, when I arrived three years ago, enrollment was on an increase. Uh, in fact, since beginning about 1995, enrollment has been taking a, a rather sharp increase here in, in, on this campus. In fact, since 1995, enrollment has increased uh, something like 68%. And so when I arrived in 2000, we were in the midst of that kind of enrollment increase. And so I had to deal, we had to begin to deal with how do we accommodate uh, the enrollment increases, both in terms of staffing and facilities. And so I immediately became involved in doing some long range planning because it didn't look, appear like the trend was going to end anytime soon. And in fact, as I mentioned earlier, even today, our applications for next fall are 20% ahead of where they were at this time last fall. And so if that trend continues, then uh, as I mentioned also, uh, over the next few years, I can see this institution exceeding 1,000 headcount, uh, which would be about a hundred percent increase since 1995 in enrollment headcounts at this institution. So I've been engaged in, in planning, basically doing a lot of planning and preparation for that anticipated growth. And then also in developing uh, new and different kinds of programming as, as I scan the community and the needs of the local community and business and industry, it became apparent to me that we needed to provide some additional types of programming, some uh, programming and curriculum that maybe might have been slightly different from what the role has been for this campus uh, in the past. So there's been a slight change in our in our mission and relationship to the community as well. And so I've been working very diligently to to strengthen those those relationships and strengthen that communication and listen uh, your, to the needs. And your relationship has also changed in coordination with the four-year campuses. Exactly. So. I mentioned scanning or, or uh, surveying the local community needs. One of the things that, that, that was emerging uh, when I arrived here was the need to provide uh, educational opportunities for adult students, for working adults. These are folks who are place bound for all intents and purposes and don't have the luxury to travel to Milwaukee or Green Bay or Oshkosh to continue education. So a real need that was expressed to me was um, could we provide um, baccalaureate level types of programs here locally for, for the benefit of those students who wanted to pursue or continue their higher education? And so uh, we began developing collaborative, what we call collaborative degrees. Our, our basic core mission is still one of transfer. I mean, that has not changed. We're a freshman, sophomore transfer institution, and we're still, even though it's possible now for students to earn baccalaureate degrees in certain areas on this campus. Those students are still uh, transferring, you know, 
that technically they're transferring to those institutions, but rather than commuting for an hour, hour and a half, they're remaining on site. In other words, the mountain is coming to Muhammad, as it were. <laughs> and so we've entered into some unique collaborations, uh, primarily with UW-Milwaukee, uh, offering four, um, four tracks leading to the bachelor's in organizational administration, communications, information technology. Uh, we have a collaborative agreement with UW-Stout which is a very specific need that was articulated by local business and industry. Uh, it seems that within uh, local um, businesses, uh, especially the manufacturing sector, there are folks within those organizations that, that they would like to promote from within or that, but are needing some additional credentialing to, to move up the corporate ladder as it were. And so they were wanting something that would be specific to manufacturing uh, constituencies and so UW Stout offers a degree in industrial management and so I worked uh, very diligently with UW Stout to have them deliver the Bachelor of Science in Industrial Management and that sort of bit was a the jumping off point for uh, our participating a little bit more with the with, with LTC the Tech College because that particular degree requires that students entering that program hold a technical degree. And so our role then is to, <clears throat> to uh, fulfill maybe some deficits in the general education area, but they must have already be holding that, that technical degree before they can go into that degree. So sort of a three-way partnership. So these are some ways in which the campus is invo uh, evolving and some of the offerings that we have for the local. And another uh, thing that I think no one would have dreamt possible, you know, three or five, four years ago was that the fact that we're even offering a graduate degree. And this is a Master of Sciences degree in education. Again, in response to a need by local school teachers who say, look, you know, it's, it's in our best interest to earn master's degrees and we're being encouraged to seek additional education for our, uh, our credentialing and for uh, salary increases and so forth, but we don't have the luxury to travel to Oshkosh or Milwaukee. So, again, servicing that need, and we currently have 35 local school teachers involved in that program. And this fall, uh, this past commencement, we graduated six students in that program. So, uh, again, I think this, these are some changes that have have been happening happening over the past few years that that, that folks may not be aware of. Very good. Uh, as a UWS alumni, I share your pride and, and appreciation of the facility. Also, as a county board chairman and as a former county board member, I've supported the key capital improvements that have made mm -hmm. it what it is today. Currently, we're working on a $1.8 million heating and air conditioning upgrade. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about the progress of that upgrade and where we are? Oh, yes. That, that project is near completion. It's been underway for, for almost a year now. And the, the situation was, as I mentioned earlier, this campus was built in, in the early 60s, and then, of course, with some additions, subsequent additions. But uh, over time, these systems age. You know, some of our systems were, were 40 years old and were uh, needing much more maintenance. It, 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 they no longer were cost effective. They weren't providing the level of comfort and efficiency that we, we'd like to have. Some areas of the campus never have been air conditioned or heated properly. Uh, you know, for, for budgetary reasons and other reasons, you know, s things were never really uh, fully implemented, you know, in terms of needs. So we had the, an opportunity, we, we underwent as part of our master facilities plan study that I, that I engaged in upon coming here, we identified infrastructure uh, needs, infrastructure uh, weaknesses, for lack of a better word, so that if we were going especially in, as it would relate to any future expansion of the facility. The bottom line was no future expansion uh, of the facility was possible given the current state of the infrastructure, the mechanical infrastructure. It just would not support it. So it, it was just absolutely necessary to upgrade the existing mechanical infrastructure to support future expansions and to even to improve and, and uh, the existing facilities to, to bring them to the comfort level and efficiency and in fact bottom line some of these systems were 
uh, on the verge of just of dying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we would have been in real trouble. But no, th thanks to the generosity and, and the wisdom of the county board, they, they saw the wisdom in investing in the mechanical infra infrastructure of this facility. And that, that covered everything, electrical systems, uh, heating and ventilation systems, lighting, uh, alarm systems, phone systems, mm -hmm. you name it. We, we've got essentially a brand new facility in terms of mechanical infrastructure at this point. Great. Just a few short weeks ago, we both took part in a groundbreaking for a $4 million new science edition. Could you talk about the opportunity that that brings to students at the campus? Certainly. Um, I mentioned uh, that you know the facilities were built in, in the early 60s, and, the, and our science teaching facilities were as well. And so they were fairly outdated facilities in terms of trying to teach contemporary science uh, to our students. But more importantly, I mentioned again, looking out in the community and, and trying to see what needs there are that we might serve. And a big need that's a critical need right now is in the healthcare area, particularly in terms of nursing shortages and that sort of thing. And so again, I'm working now in collaboration with Lakeshore Technical College to provide a, a bachelor's completion program for nurses. The, the healthcare industry locally, the healthcare providers are telling me we need a, a BSN program to, for, our, for our students to complete that work. Well, this new building will then begin mm -hmm. to provide a basis, an opportunity that becomes a, a launching point for us to be able to provide that kind of instruction. The, the state and condition of our science laboratories previously would not have supported that kind of programming. So again, there's that responsiveness to the community. So we, we, we upgrade and improve our ability to teach our transfer science program. But now this new science facility gives us the ability to, to bring on uh, science-based programming in, in health careers and, and other sciences. You know, I'm, I'm even thinking about engineering programs and things of that nature. So it's going to provide a tremendous opportunity uh, for the, that kind of programming for the local community. So incredibly wise long-term investment in my estimation. Great. We talked earlier about partnerships between the state and the university. Certainly the Bratz family stepped up to the plate in making a huge contribution to help complete this facility. Yes, the Bratz Family Foundation has a, you know, a long-standing history of, of benevolence and support for, for the community. And uh, <clears throat> their basic premise is that they want to support education and, and services to the community to give back to the community. And so a science facility uh, and the opportunities that it would provide for the local communities, you know, um, uh, appeared to be a very good opportunity for them to fulfill their mission. And of course, the science building is very much in keeping with the type of industry, uh, you know, the, the, the plastics engineering industry that the Bratz family uh, uh, owned. So there was, there was a good fit. But underlying that is, you know, I think that the Bratz family saw the long-term benefit to the community by, by helping support the construction of that, of that facility. Uh, what other opportunities might be on the horizon? We've heard talk of possibly co-location with UW Extension, other technology issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the co-location of Extension is something that's being currently discussed. Uh, in my view, that was, an, that was something that emerged uh, as, as a positive uh, relationship from the, the facilities master plan study and the, and the scanning of community needs. Uh, I think there's some synergies, some uh, uh, ability to, to expand and improve programming and services for both institutions by co-locating uh, extension on the UW Sheboygan campus. Uh, extension is under a different arm of the UW system, but it nevertheless is part of the UW system. And so there's some benefits also for the county in terms of uh, supporting uh, functions rather than at separate locations, maybe consolidating some of that into maybe there's some efficiencies that could be realized that way. But, but from my perspective, the improvements and synergy that can happen in terms of programming and delivery of services to, uh, to the community, I think, uh, make that a very sensible move in my estimation. Mm -hmm. I think there would be benefit for both. 
other opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, collaborations with the technical college. I think there's been a long standing need uh, or, or a push, if I may say, for, for figuring out ways that we can uh, jointly serve the citizens of Sheboygan County. Uh, how can our institutions collaborate in order to uh, make the transition between the two institutions easier for students and uh, maybe enhance by putting together our, our, our resources and strengths and enhance those opportunities. So I see on the horizon an increase in that kind of collaboration with the technical college, which I think, again, is a, is a cost efficient mm -hmm. move in terms of uh, uh, for the taxpayer and for the county. Okay. You've been in Sheboygan for about three years, Dean, and we're certainly glad that you're here. What changes do you see going on both in Sheboygan and the state that may impact the University of Sheboygan down the road? Right. Well, the change, obviously, the, the economy, the state's economy, you know, and that's, that's, how, that's snowballing down to local governments, as, as you well know, county government, city government, and all of that. But I think that that's going to precipitate institutions looking at ways to economize, to, to become more efficient. And I think um, higher institutions like UW-Sheboygan, you know, want to be part of that solution. And how can we address um, both the economic needs of the state or help meet those needs, but also the educational needs? Because these economic downturns then are also, and you see this, this, this is typical during a, times of economic downturn, you see an increase mm -hmm. in enrollments uh, in higher education. So just at the time when there, there, there are fewer dollars available to support education, there's an increase in demand. And see, and there, there, there's a tension, there's, there's the, uh, the rub. And so I'm very interested in, in working with local units of government and state government in, in, in devising ways that we can we can access because that's what we're here to do. We're here to access and provide those opportunities in a way that, you know, within the environment that we're living at this point. Uh, other issues, I think there's some, edu in terms of just higher education, I think there's a, a shift, as I just mentioned, uh, per particularly within the UW system, uh, towards recognizing that we need to be part of uh, the state solution to economic and workforce development. And so I'm seeing now direction coming from all the way from the Board of Regents level telling us, look, get involved in your local communities, find out what those needs are, see if you can't discover ways that, that you can help uh, address some of those issues. And so I see us playing a, a larger role in terms of economic and workforce development in a, at the local level. And I think that's a different, slightly different posture for the UW system as a whole and, and a function of these, of these institutions. And so, so part of my responsibility, I believe, is to, to engage in that kind of activity and get the word out and encourage people to, to uh, work with us because that's what we're here to do, to serve in that capacity. Great. Uh, speaking of the economy, not only are we hurting nationally, but certainly the state of Wisconsin and many viewers are probably tired of hearing about this $3.2 billion deficit at the state level. And as you mentioned earlier, that certainly is coming home to roost and will affect all levels of government. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheboygan County is just starting our budget process and it could be one of the most challenging that any of us have faced. Um, how does the budget proposed at the state level at this point affect UW Sheboygan. At this point, uh, the, the, thing, the Joint Finance Committee basically, you know, supported the governor's recommendation, which was a $250 million GPR reduction to the UW system, as well as I think about a 650 uh, position uh, reduction. Uh, so the Joint Finance, and also the governor recommended. A, a concomitant tuition increase to help offset some of the GPR reduction. And so by the time you do all the put, puts and takes, $650, $650 million re reduction in budget, if the tuition increases pass as recommended, that's going to replace 
some of that revenue loss to, so that the net loss will be about $100 million. What that means is for the UW colleges, and the, the structure of the UW college, the two-year campuses, there are 13 of us, but we're considered a single college, which is a little bit unique as well. <laughs> But for the UW colleges, that translates to about an $8 million loss to be spread among the 13 campuses. And so at this point in time, the, the, the portion, UW Sheboygan's portion, we can handle in terms of uh, cutting operations and travel and those kinds of, of line items. We, we don't need to cut any positions. But the problem I just mentioned the increase in applications, we're not going to be able to add positions to to meet that demand, and that's that's the challenge right now. Our budget is fairly, in terms of um, allocable dollars, uh, we're going to be basically flat. In other words, we're not going to see any net increase in terms of our revenue for next year. So we have to devise a ways to to serve more students with the same amount of dollars, and that's the challenge right now. And so we're beginning to. Uh, come up with creative ways to to access as many students as we possibly can uh, Given the available dollars, but basically our budget is flat. There's not, not a net reduction, but it's flat We, so. <laughs> we only have a couple of minutes remaining. So one more question and uh, Might have to respond pretty quickly, but in short and I think you touched on this earlier a number of our viewers might be thinking well I understand the county and all these other local units of government are going to be having cost reduction plans. The city's asked for reductions across the board. Sheboygan County is going to have their budget kick off this month and we'll be looking for reductions across the board. So taxpayers might be wondering, how is it then that we can be making this $4 million investment in UW Sheboygan and some of the other mechanical upgrades mm -hmm. that you mentioned earlier? Yeah. How, how would you respond to that question? Um, because it is that. It, it is an investment in the future. You know, I mentioned again the role that the greater role that we're playing in the workforce and economic development of, of the region and of the state. So I think it's important and, and, and that is borne out by the number of folks who want to access additional education. If we can provide that access and that education to those students, that's going to translate later into uh, you know, jobs, higher salaries, more income tax, all of that coming back into the state uh, coffer. So, you have to think about it as an investment in the future, in the longer, for the long, greater good, the longer range good of the community and the state. I think it's a, it's a small price to pay for the greater benefit that's going to result in the long run. Well, Dean, thank you so much for being our guest today and, and keep up the good work. A lot of exciting things again happening out here at UW Sheboygan. If you haven't had an opportunity, I encourage you to stop on by and see the uh, where the new science building is is uh, now being constructed. They have broken ground and, and maybe even want to stop in and say hello to the Dean because he's certainly here working hard and making good things happen. Next month, we're going to hear from one of our other directors or department heads and that's going to be Dale Pauls at the healthcare centers. As you know, it was about a year ago, a year in July, that we had our consolidation implemented and went from three nursing homes to two and uh, had the $10 million addition completed at the Rocky Knoll campus. So I hope you'll join us next month on behalf of County Board Chairman Bill Gehring and myself, Adam Payne. Thank you for joining us today.